I invite you to join me in today's call to worship. Christ calls for us to believe. We believe in the word of God. Christ invites us to follow his example. Yes, we will follow. We will love one another as you have loved us. I invite you to stand and sing with us our first hymn, hymn 62, All Creatures of Our God and King. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing. Oh, praise ye, hallelujah. Oh, brother, sun with golden beam. Oh, sister, moon with silver gleam. Oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. clouds and rain, by which all creatures ye sustain. Oh, praise ye, alleluia. Now rising morning, praise rejoice. Ye lights of evening, find a voice. Oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye. flowing clear, make music for thy Lord to hear, alleluia, alleluia, oh brother, fire who lights a night, providing warmth and hands inside, oh praise ye, oh praise ye, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. By day, unfold this blessing on our way. Alleluia, alleluia. No flowers and fruits that thinly grow. Let them God's glory also show. Oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part, oh, praise ye, alleluia, yea, whom the bear, praise God, and on him cast your cares, oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our next hymn is 154, and they can be found in your hymnals, or will, the words will be on the screen. All hail the power of Jesus' name. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal Trophies at his feet and crown him. 
that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Welcome, you may be seated. So glad to have you here at Maplewood United Methodist Church, no matter how you're joining us. And we hope that this will be a time of blessing and joy in your heart and in your life, that you might be reminded that you're loved and that you don't have to prove yourself worthy because God loves you as you are. But he also calls you to a better life, a life where you experience everlasting joy in this life and the next one of the things I've learned in my time of ministry, we shifted from everybody knowing the church language to a place where most of us are going, have I ever heard that word before? And in this song was the diadem word that I usually have somebody come and say, so what was that? Um, the key is in the song, the diadem is a crown. We're going to crown him with the royal diadem. And that is that sense of crowning Christ, the leader of our lives and the ruler of our lives. And uh, it's a beautiful image and some of the beautiful songs. But the other thing is, is, all the way through that are all of these scripture references. Just like a lot of the new songs that we sing, they come straight from scripture. So I encourage you, you can get the Bible app on your phone and you can type one of those words in and you will get that scripture reference in a minute, and it'll all have those deeper meanings for you as you go and learn the songs and learn something about scripture as you do. So we have a little one that came in after you, Carla. Are you, yes, Eleanor's here. <laughs> so if her daddy brings her, she usually comes down to talk to you. <laughs> She wore a royal diadem. There we go. My halo keeps coming off. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. Eleanor, did you have a good Halloween? He says, oh, he was here. He came. Yeah. What did you dress up as? Can you say I was a kitty cat? Yeah. Were you a kitty cat? Does that mean you are a kitty cat? Talking to the back of her head. Yeah, I know. Did you get a lot of candy? Did, did you eat it all? As much as mom and dad would like. Is your dad eating it all? Slowly but surely. I thought so. That's what I thought. Can't you tell? So I decided I was going to be an angel. See? Can you tell I'm an angel? I'm an angel. Do you think that means I'm an angel since I have look like an angel? Sure. They, they know. They know. They know the answer. So I'm really not an angel, right? But I thought if I wore a halo that God would think that I was an angel and he would be happy about that. But I'm not really an angel, am I? No. No. So Jesus looks not at what I look like on the outside, but he looks in here. And he says, he looked at people on the inside and he said, wow, you're a tax collector. You're not bad. You're a thief, but you're not bad. 
or you're a criminal and you're not bad because he looked inside. Because he thought that everybody, even when they look good or when they look bad on the outside, everybody is worthy of God's love and forgiveness. Kitty cats and angels alike. Okay, Eleanor, can you pray? Can you go like that? Okay. Good job. All right. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all the candy we got on Halloween. Help us to remember that you love us when we're good and when we're bad. Amen. <laughs> it's why they were for the kids <laughs> right <laughs> the getting back up is the hard part as we enter into this time in prayer I invite you if you have a prayer concern this morning that you would like to share whether you're with us here or out there is to open our app and put it on the prayer wall and Dominic will share those later as we list off our prayer concerns. If you're not comfortable with that and you can text, you can text not the church number because it's not a cell phone, but you can check, text mine, and which is on the website. Um, you can also write it on a piece of paper and hand it to me here, and we will make sure those prayers get on the prayer list. Also invite all of you to go to the prayer wall in the app and just like you can like all of those crazy things po people post on social media, you can click on the prayer hands and let the people that have posted those prayers know that you are praying for them and with them on those. Let us enter into the spirit of prayer. Holy God, the chaos around us the anger and wars, the struggles for power and place just seem overwhelming in this time, O oh God. But it's not the only time in history that it has seemed this way. So help us be as you have called us to be, peacemakers. Those who seek not to choose sides, but to lift up the value of every human life. To remember that it isn't one over the other, but all that you seek to save. That your place in the world, O oh God, is not to destroy some and save others, but that your love reached out to save the whole world. Help us in this place to speak yes in support of those who have lost and also encouragement of those who need to remember not to hate but to reach out and love in a way that brings peace to the world. We know, O oh God, it is not as easy as just saying, I forgive you. We know, O oh God, that the pain goes super deep all the way in and through, and that the solution isn't just in that one person forgiving, but the solution is understanding that we are here all as those you love. And that every life, those that are small, those that we know the least about, is of value to you, O oh God. So help us to reach out our hands in love and community that we might bring down the number of violent episodes, the amount of anger in the world, and be true peacemakers who reflect your love in a world that is hurting. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we lift up in prayer, prayers for the Freer family as they are awaiting a 
correct diagnosis and treatment plan um, that is most likely some form of brain cancer. We also pray for Jacob's dad, Brent, who had knee replacement surgery. We pray for the family of Mary Riley, Maria and her family. We lift up in prayer all of the folks and families who, in Lewis and Maine and that entire community. We continue to pray for Dennis Wheeler, who went home on Thursday, uh, for Tina, and for the conflicts around the world. We continue to lift up in prayer those who are fighting cancer, Stan's friend Ruthie, Anne, Lauren, Daryl, Gary, Joe, Madeline, Austin, and Pete. We lift up prayers of support to all those who are helping to take care of family members in nursing homes and assisted living centers, specifically Cheryl and her mom, Heather and her dad, Teresa, Florence, Mary and her mother-in-law, Sue and her mom, Matt McKeever and his parents, and Judy. As always, we pray for those who are serving our community, our teachers, those who protect others, and members of our community who have, who struggle and might be marginalized. We pray that they may know Christ's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our next hymn. He is exalted in the Faith We Sing book, if you want to. Uh, it's on page 2070. Otherwise, the words will be on the screen as we prepare to hear today's message. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever. His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy name. exalted and I will praise his name. He is the Lord, forever his true shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name. He is 
exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. Really deserves a hallelujah. So I'm in John 17, they were reading through this process. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 13 to start this reading, partly because it, it does a little bit of that wrapping around that I think can get us lost in trying to figure out what's being said. But here that this is a prayer that Jesus prays for the disciples. Remember, we're at that Last Supper. We've been going through this process as he's preparing them for who the community is going to be and what their role is going to be after he leaves. And the first part of the prayer is indeed him lifting up to heaven that he's giving them to, the, to God and he wants the community to be one with God like he's been with God. And then we continue that starting with verse 13. I am coming to you now, but I pray these things while I am still in the world so that these followers can have all of my joy in them. I have given them your teaching, and the world has hated them, because they don't belong to the world, just as I don't belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They don't belong to the world, just as I don't belong to the world. Make them ready for your service through your truth. Your teaching is truth. I have sent them into the world just as you sent me into the world. For their sake, I am making myself ready to serve so that they can be ready for their service to the truth. I pray for these followers, but I am also praying for all those who will believe in me because of their teachings. Father, I pray that they can be one as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they can also be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. I have given these people the glory that you gave me so that they can be one, just as you and I are one. I will be in them and you will be in me so that they will be completely one. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you loved them so much, as, as much as you loved me. Father, I want these people that you gave me to be with me where I am. I want them to see my glory, which you gave me because you loved me before the world was made. Father, you are the one who is good. The world does not know you, but I know you, and these people know you sent me. I showed them what you are like, and I will show them again. Then they will have the same love that you have for me, and I will live in them. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. I think the first time I really read through John way back in the day, reading these passages in this long dialogue that comes around the supper and then this prayer were so powerful because if you really think about it, the other gospels kind of shorten this story a lot and they don't give us any of these conversations. And, and that to me is one of the big pieces about looking at John and seeing this dialogue of Jesus really talking about his relationship with the disciples and preparing them for what's coming next. But just like we've talked about is this other layer is realizing that John, as the latest gospel written, is one that's also talking to a community where Christ didn't come back three days after he went up. And to realize that the community, just like us, as we get, we start with all kinds of excitement. We know what we're gathering for and we're ready to go. And then, after a while, kind of gets, well, we just do what we do because we've done it. But then we start to go, so when was that going to happen? <laughs> and so we have the community starting to ask that question of when is Christ coming back? And if he hasn't come back already, what's our role in the world? And into that, we have these words of Christ, this prayer, this beautiful prayer said for the community. As God, he's calling God's protection on the community. He's calling for God's presence in the community. But he's also doing something else that stood out to me this time that was just so amazing. He's saying to the community, you know how close God and I have been. 
Now I want you to understand you're that close to God. That he really is putting that place of saying, this is the role I've played, this is who I am. I came and revealed God to you. I taught you the truth and I talked directly to God. Now that's yours. To think about that our role as a community isn't just to be followers of Christ. Our role as a community is to be that light of Christ in our community. To be a place where people can come and see who God is. A place where we as this community can call out to God without saying, Beth Ann, we know you're the angel. Please say boo. <laughs> So you talk to God because we're gonna, we're just, we're not good enough. But the, to realize that as a community, and this is where that ministry of all believers really comes into play, is understanding that while I stand out here because my call for some reason was to talk all the time, that that doesn't change the fact that you're as close to God as I am. That God hasn't put any barriers between you and him. He hasn't said, if you do these 10 things, then you're allowed to talk to me. Christ has said, now, just as close as I was to God, you are to God. You have that relationship of that closeness. But then there's this other piece in that, is in now here's our place. We're to be a community that witnesses to who God is. To me, this has been one of the things that was the hardest part when I started hearing the stories of people who tried to go through church doors and were rejected for whatever reason. I had a family show up in church once who had been going to a church and they said, we showed up to church this Sunday and the pastor told us we were no longer welcome. Okay. Okay. But we all know, or most of us have heard some stories about what are those issues for me about why does it matter that we include LBGTQIA+, and I think the SA was the other part I was supposed to add, um, that we add people that come to the door whether they're dressed right, whether they live the way we should live them, because if we're, our job is to show God to people and we slam the door in their face, what have we revealed about God? Not that he's good all the time. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I try to sell, throw you softballs on those. If our God is good all the time, then the door's open. We're not looking for people that fit a particular place. The other part about revealing God as Christ came to show that truth is that he came to heal. So to me that that's the other struggle as a community as we start to think about where's our place in the world in which we're living in right now is that challenge of the world needs healing. Say amen. Because along with lots of cute costumes and wonderful kids and beautiful families, I saw frustration and people strung out. And I don't mean on drugs particularly, I mean just overextended. I see people who are tired and overworked and don't have enough money all around us. And that becomes our place. If we believe God has the power to heal and that's a truth about him, then part of the way we witness to who God is in truth is to indeed reach out a hand to help people up, to care about those places that are broken and hurt in them. Now, before you get too worked up of the I can't do that, one of the things that I think of when Jesus says, you're my witnesses now, we don't have to witness by memorizing scripture. It's good to know. But our witness is just as simple as starting with, what do you know about God? 
Not in the test sense, but where has he touched your life? Where does your relationship with God bring hope into your day? Where on your journey of faith has God's love helped you? Because for me, while I love scripture and believe in what it says and what it reveals, the truth of how I know God is real is those places he's met me on the road. And the places that make me smile are the places where I get to hear the stories of other people who have met him on the road. And he's touched their lives. I've probably told you this story. I still always think when I think of that sense of witnessing to what God has done in our lives, I think of that woman I met who was already in her 70s. And I kept talking about the joy of Christ and she came to me after about a year and a half and said, you know that joy you talk about? I don't know that. I come to church because I've always come to church. Came to church because it's the thing I'm supposed to do, and I come to this church because I grew up in this church. She said, so how do I find out about that joy? She said, you start digging in. Start reading Scripture. Start listening for God's voice, and you find the joy. And I still, the two pictures that run in my head is she came to Bible study, and at first it was I know nothing, and then she would come with a history book under one arm, a co commentary in one arm, and three other books in addition to her Bible, and she would come with a list of questions. And I will never forget the Sunday she looked at me and she said, I know that joy that you're talking about. And her face was lit up. It isn't that God makes us feel joy every single day. It is knowing that he indeed changes our lives because we believe. It's what Jesus wanted us to have. Not just a list of things to do, but a life that was shaped by that joy. It's that joy that can allow us to run without being weary, to continue to do. And it isn't that there's any miracle, special story of this is how you know God has touched your life. It can be as simple as, you know, I, there was a rainbow when I stepped out my door today, and it made me smile because it made me think of God's creation. And it can be the peace that passes understanding in a moment that you never thought should bring peace. Or it could be seeing how God puts you just where you are because that's where you're supposed to be. That's what we witness to. The other thing we witness to is the truth of God's love. One of the things that uh, happened at the meeting that I went to was that in the closing worship service, they had a choir that included groups from every nationality that are part of our clergy and part of our conference, meaning, and we have Hispanic pastors and we have Korean pastors and we have several from different nations in Africa, and they sang the songs we know in all of those languages, and I just wept. And it's happened to me before under the same circumstances. To me, that's what church is. All of us coming together and loving each other, even though we're completely different. The vision of the church is that blending of everybody. Not the conforming <laughs> of everybody, but the coming together to live that community of love. And it's tricky, because right now we live in a time where it's like, I don't have to deal with you if you don't agree with me 100%. That's silly. That's silly. 
we could find a thousand things to disagree on in five minutes. But Jesus said, the reason we're one is not about believing every single thing exactly alike, but agreeing on one important thing, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And that the God he revealed, the God of love, the one that so loved the world that he sent his son, the belief in that God that we love each other, that when we look at somebody, we don't see how they're different than us. We see that they're a child of God like us. Beautiful to behold. And then we learn our differences and we live it. And I have to tell you, I mean, we should know after so long that that's not an easy place to be is to remember that. We can find lots of things to fight over. In the local church, in the national church, within whatever group. So it's a call to keep trying to find a way to love each other, to look for and to see Christ in one another. That is what God has given us as our call, our purpose in this world, as a community of faith, is to be that witness into a world that needs healing, that needs hope, that needs a place where they know that everyone is loved and belongs. That's the truth that Christ calls us to teach the witness he calls us to be. And in all of that, we have to understand that no matter how long it takes, we haven't been left alone because we have been left in a relationship with God as close as his son. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, your love for us has shown us so much. Fear and struggles can come in, but help us to remember the stories of the places where you've put joy in our hearts, hope into our lives, and lifted us up, that we might indeed witness to those moments that a world that is broken and in need of healing may see you and know you as we do. In Jesus' name, amen. As we enter into this time of communion, I invite you to sing with us our next hymn, Take Our Bread. Uh, it can be found in the hymnal on page 640. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours, we are yours, yours as we stand at the table you set, yours as we eat the bread our hearts can't forget, we are the sign of your life with us yet, we are yours, we are yours. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours, we are yours. Your holy people standing washed in your blood, Spirit filled yet hungry, we await your food. We are poor, but we brought ourselves the best we could. We are yours, we are yours. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts. We love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours. Yours. 
So I say to you, as always, the table is open to everyone, regardless of membership or beliefs. As long as you seek that relationship with Jesus Christ, you're welcome to the table. One of the things I'm asked frequently is, what about the child? Should they receive communion? They don't know what it means. Um, You might have had me ask you a couple times, do you want to try to explain it? (laughs) All of us struggle with understanding, but one thing kids do know is when they're not included. And so do we as adults. So it's one of the reasons why I believe in what we do as United Methodist is that the table is open to absolutely everyone who seeks that relationship, regardless of anything else. And so we will be receiving the bread. When you come forward, I will give you a piece and then you will take a cup, and this is grape juice. There is a gluten-free option of bread that will stay here on the, pl- on the table if you need that gluten-free choice. If you cannot come forward, please stay in your seat and everybody help me. Some days I'm really good about keeping track of everybody and some days I'm not. Um, if you see somebody who didn't come forward and they would like to receive, just wave at me um, as we prepare. Let us prepare the table. It was at that last supper that Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to God and he broke the bread. And then he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. When the meal was over, he took the cup. He again gave thanks to God. And then he gave it to his disciples saying, take, drink. This is my blood poured out for you and for many as a sign of the new covenant. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. So gracious and holy God, in remembrance of you, we come to this table, remembering that you have made us worthy, that you call us your children, and that you seek, O God, that our lives are filled with your joy and the hope of eternal life, and the hope of peace. So, Holy God, through your Spirit, we ask you to bless these cups and this bread, that they will join us together in one body, as one witness, one light, one purpose, for you in this community. In Jesus' name, amen. okay don't feel like you have to run I said don't feel like you have to run (laughs) table is now ready
May Christ's love for you lift you up. May it also bind us together in a purpose that is greater than anything we can imagine, that we might bring joy and know joy. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Brothers and sisters, think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. Do what you learned and received from me, what I told you, and what you saw me do. And the God who gives peace will be with you. I have to really start with lots of thank yous. This has been a busy week. We had almost 100 kids here on Tuesday night for Trunk or Treat, which really ended up inside, <laughs> which a lot of people appreciated. So I want to thank Kathleen, who uh, headed that up even from another country and did a lot of work in thinking and caring about that and all of the people that helped. That was such a blessing. The families enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed that somebody from the neighborhood said, I'm not going to have any kids at my house. Can I come trunk or treat with you guys and pass out candy? And so we're starting to see that kind of piece of knowing that the neighborhood is part of who we are and a joy. So thanks to everybody who did that. And then we ended the week with soup, soup, and more soup. Right, Sally? And I, <laughs> yes. And I just want to say Sally does a phenomenal job and all of the people who helped with that is such a joy. Um, and we ended up selling more than we sold last time. And yes, there's for sure I know from the email there's chicken noodle soup left. If anybody, just chicken? Okay. I know I saw others in this. So there's chicken noodle and some chili. Still available. Um, there were some brownies, too. Um, I might pay double for brownies, but <laughs> suggested is if you want to give $5, the goal is that it all goes to a good home. Um, what we've learned from some people is they stick it in the freezer and have it later. So um, it isn't like you have to eat it all right now. The other things I want to lift up, we have a new study starting Monday night at 6 o'clock. Um, still room for people. There's always room for people to start that. It's really on the practices of faith, and I think that's one of those places that helps us start going deeper. And uh, the other is to just lift up the charge conference is this Thursday night. It's at Rockbrook UMC. It is the joint group ones. Just lifting that up. If you have any questions, want to see the paperwork, I will get those reports out after we're finished so that people can have the annual report. But uh, if you have any questions on that, please feel free to ask anybody on leadership. And I will say we are going to have a joint Thanksgiving service with St. Luke's. I just got that information, so it just got posted on the wall out here. That will be the, third, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. It's just a short Thanksgiving service at 6 o'clock, followed by a potluck with soup and pie. And you bring either one you feel comfortable bringing. And it is joint with several other churches, including the synagogue. And so it's just a way to come together as believers and enjoy and get ready for the Thanksgiving service season. Because I know you're all worried about what you're cooking because I heard that conversation. God is good. And all the time. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, hymn 327, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown him with many crowns, a lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns a music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king. The Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord.
Have a blessed week. Get soup.